Okay, so we got this. Uh, I'm gonna do this example problem on um, calculating frame reactions. And here I've got this. We have a, a frame uh, member A, B, C, D. It's fixed at A. A pin or a hinge at B. Another hinge at point C here, and then this member B, C rests on top of them. Okay, and then and then a pin at D right there. Okay, and hopefully the sound is good. And then we'll say that the height is 10 meters and the horizontal distance is 15 meters of this frame, although it looks more like a square. And then this is 5 kilonewton per meter dist uniform distributed load. And we want to find the reactions at A and B. So what we're going to do is the first thing you have to do, really, unless you're told, right, is check determinacy. All right, check determinacy, which is, uh, right, it's, uh, this one looks a little tricky, okay? And then you want to draw your free body diagram, draw FBD, you know, identify your unknowns. That's the whole point. Okay. Draw FBD and then apply the, apply. And in this case, I'm going to write apostrophe S. Okay. Because there's going to be multiple. Okay. And apply equilibrium equations, equilib equations. Okay. All right. And then we'll solve for the unknowns. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here. Okay, so here, uh, let's see what I got, what I got, what I got. I got right here. So here, let's let's go for determinacy. Okay, and let me let me zoom out a little bit so I can have some more paper to work with. And here, um, let's see. The first thing we're going to do is determinacy. Okay, and and really, this kind of requires a free body diagram. Yeah. Okay, so at A, I have. Let's, let's start with the reactions at A. What It's a fixed support, so how many reactions do I have? Three. Three reactions. So I would have a vertical right here. And it doesn't matter if you draw it up or down, really. Okay, so you just have to just draw it. So I'll call that AY, a horizontal, AX, and then a moment. Okay, and so I have X and Y. So I'm going to kind of keep a, it doesn't matter if you drew it the other way. I'm going to call this MA. Okay, oops. MA like this. MA. So I have three reactions here at A, and then at D, I have a pin support, so I have two reactions, DY, and then I'll just draw, draw DX like that, okay? So so I have here, um, if I look at this, my number of reactions is one, two, three, four, five. Five reactions. The number of equilibrium equations is... How many? Three. I have three equilibrium equations right here. And and so just from a quick glance, I would think this is statically indeterminate to second degree. But now I'm not counting the hinges. Okay. So the brute force way of, of checking the determinacy when you have hinges is to separate the drawing wherever you have a hinge. Okay. So here, if I if I were to do that, I would have like this. I would have, let's see, I'm gonna draw it. For member A, B, member B, C, and member um, C, D, like this, right here. And I would have, I have three reactions here, so let me scroll down a little bit. I have three reactions at A, so I have A, Y, A, X, M, A, right here. And then internally, at point B, right here, I have a, a, uh, kind of a, a shear, which I would actually draw this way, like the shear at B, and then a normal force at B, yeah? And, and But people don't always label it like that, okay? So here, in this case, we're going to label them, let's say, BX and BY, okay? And then I have equal and opposite over here, transferring across, I have this, B, oops, that's not equal and opposite, right? I would have BX and BY, yeah? Okay, so BX, BY, and then over here on the, and then I have, obviously I have the distributed loading right here. I can't, I don't want to neglect that. And same thing here, I have the distributed loading that's on the member. I don't want to neglect that, okay? But here I also have, here at C, I would have, uh, um, let's say, uh, C, Y, and C, X, like this, okay? And then I'd have equal and opposite on here, C, Y, 
and cx right here. And then I have here, I would have dy and dx like this, okay? And, and as I have to be consistent in how I draw the hinges in the sense that I have to make sure they're equal and opposite, okay? And hopefully, even if I drew it supposedly in the wrong sense, the negative sign will fix it later on. So here in this drawing right here, in this first drawing, the first member, member AB, I've got, let's see, I have, I have three unknowns or three, I have one, two, three, four, five, five unknowns, right? And three equilibrium equations, okay? Here I have, actually here, let me, let's, let's take this back, okay? Now I have, let's, for this, all the drawings together, right? My number of unknowns, number of unknowns, let's call it, okay, is one, two, three, right here, four, five, and I have a BX and BY, so I don't want to double count those, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay, so I have nine unknowns, okay, that's a weird looking nine, okay, nine unknowns, and I have, for each drawing here, I have per drawing, okay, so that would be three times three, which is nine, right? And therefore, because my number of unknowns equals my number of equations, they this is a uh, this is a uh, this is this is statically determinate, statically determinate. Okay, all right. So that that's it just you know you just gotta break it apart. The hinge. That's a brute force way. The um, you will find in some structural analysis textbooks, you will find that they say, uh, let's see, they'll check, at, they'll say number of reactions like this is equal to, so in other textbooks, they, what they do is they say this, they say number of reactions equals, and then you can put a question mark right here, and then they have this, uh, uh, here actually, let's say, number of unknowns, let's call it number of unknowns, right, is equal to number of equations plus number of releases, okay? And so what they would do is say that I have five reactions, three equilibrium, three, uh, three reactions plus two hinges, which are releases, right? And then that would say that five equals five, and, and, and you would have a statically determinate structure. But there's a lot of inter. But this is the drawing is is the way to go, right? If you're if you know it's hard to remember these all the time, okay. So you don't have to worry about trying to memorize that stuff, okay. But that's maybe in a graduate level class they might ask you to. They'll get really complicated, and you'll have all these constraints you have to consider to other kinds of things, especially like when there's bracing or something is infinitely rigid or modeled that way, okay. So now that we know that we can solve this, okay. This drawing is actually really good for us right here. And what we would do, because we have this right here, like we have this drawing, we would want to draw this by separating the um, the hinges out, right? We want to separate all the hinges out. And and so I could, let's say, let's start with, wh which one do you think would be a good member to start with? I'm going to go with, how about... Member, I've got how many unknowns do I have right here? I have one, two, three, four. And how many unknowns do I have here? One, two, three, four. And then how many unknowns do I have here? One, two, three, four, five. Oi, okay. So I, I really just need to go member by member, pretty much. Um, let's see. Let's start with this one right here, okay? So I'll redraw this one right here. We'll start with that member and try to figure out some things, okay? So let's see here, or in fact, let's start with just, let's go right to left around. Yeah, that, that'll be sufficient. So let's just start with this member right here. It doesn't matter, okay? So we'll start with this member over here first, okay? So I'll do to analyze member CD right there. And in member CD, let's, be, let's, let's draw a little bit better here. So I, bam, like that, and I've got, the way I drew this, I had dy and dx, and then for c's, I had cx and cy, so cx and cy, okay? So if I do some of the forces, 
in the horizontal equal to zero, I would get that uh, dx minus cx equals zero. Yeah? And then if I did some of the forces in the vertical, which just tells me that dx equals cx. Yeah? And then some of the forces in the vertical equal to zero, then that would tell me that CY plus DY equals zero, which just tells me that CY equals minus DY. Yeah, so they should be in opposite directions. And if I apply some of the moments, uh-oh, right, right here. If I apply some of the moments, huh, some of the moments about this point, let's say C or D, okay? So let's some moments about C equal to zero for this member. I'll go, this is positive right here. And the length of this member we said was, was it 10? 10 meters. 10 meters right here. And I think we're going to need a calculator. Not right now, but we'll need a calculator eventually. Okay. Is preferably your FE approved calculator. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So here this would be dx times 10 meters equals zero. And that tells me dx equals zero, which tells me that cx equals zero. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. All right. Good. <laughs> yes. All right. Now we go to the next member right here. Member, I'll call this, this was member CD. Let's go to member BC. Right here, so two, oh, I need a new page. What's up? Okay, three. One, two, three, member C, D. And here, you know, this is getting too easy. You should just fast forward, dude. All right, so here, let's just draw that again very fast. Uh, right here, bam. And then I had, which way did I have C, C? x and c y c x this way c y which way did i draw that before downwards and d y downwards too that looks weird oh that, that one c y and then i had five kilonewtons per meter per meter and then i had b y and b x and is that correct it might be consistent yes okay Good, and we knew that CX equals zero, so that's that's cool. CX is zero. That means some of the forces in the horizontal equals zero. Therefore, BX equals zero, right? And then if I take moments, I don't have to do you know some of the for I could do some of the forces in the vertical, but I'm going to end up with two unknowns in that equation. So moments are really nice for this. So the moments equal to zero about point, let's say B, okay? And that would tell me that minus CY times, I believe the length was 15 meters, 15 meters. So here, minus CY uh, times 15 meters, 15 meters minus the area of this distributed load, which is 5 kilonewton per meter times 15 meters times the resultant location. So this is the location of the resultant, 5 times 15, which is 75 kilonewtons, uh, times 7.5 meters equals zero. And that tells me, ooh, the 15s cancel. And 5 times 7.5, CY is negative... 37.5 yes 0.5 kilonewtons okay and the negative just means that uh when i go back to this drawing it should be in the opposite sense that force right the negative just means that okay and then that means that by i could take moments about the other side and do the same thing but because i can look at this and i know that it's the symmetry right i notice the symmetry of the loading and the reactions on this member so therefore, BY equals CY, which is equal to minus 37.5 kilonewtons as well. Okay? And meaning, again, that negative just indicates it's in the opposite direction. Yes. Okay. Now, 
with that being said, that's B, Y, and C, Y. So now I think I'm ready to go to the last member, C, D. Yeah? C, D. Or C, D, yeah? A, B, A, B, A, B. Yes, A, B. Ooh, thank you. So one, two, three, four. One, two, four. Four right here. Member A, B. And it's all... Yeah, you get the idea, right? It's pretty easy. Not too bad. Okay. All right. So here I'm going to draw member AB out. It's always nice to have good drawings. And here I had a Y, a X, M, A. I had a, which way did I draw BX before I drew it? I got to be consistent. BX, BY, left up. So BX and BY. And I have a loading of five kilonewtons per meter over what was the length of this 10 meters again over 10 meters and this again i knew that bx is zero yes okay from before and by is negative 37.5 still it's still negative 37.5 so sometimes people get confused sometimes they because of that negative they draw it the opposite direction already then you have to use a positive number right if you start changing the way you know your consistency of drawings okay so that's that's important that's a common mistake all right so here if i do some of the forces in the horizontal equal to zero then that means ax plus five kilonewton per meter times 10 meters equals zero yes and that tells me ax is minus 50 kilonewtons Okay, so there's one reaction there. Uh, it also tells me that if I take uh, some of the forces in the Y equal to zero or in the vertical, and I say this is positive, I would have BY plus AY equals zero, which means AY equals minus BY, and B, that would be minus minus 37.5 kilonewtons, okay, which means that AY is 37.5 kilonewtons and the positive number indicates that the way we drew it the sense is correct okay and then i sum moments about point a sum moments about a equal to zero like this and that would tell me that ma minus the resultant here five times ten so that's 50 kilonewtons times the distance right so ma uh, minus 5 kilonewton per meter times 10 meters times half the distance, uh, which is 5 meters, equals 0, which tells me that is 50 times 5 is, two, MA is 250 kilonewton meters. Okay? And the positive number indicates that the way I drew this is also correct in the positive sense. So this is one answer. This is another answer for the reaction at A. AX of negative 50 just means that if I were to draw this in the positive sense, the arrow has to go the other way. Okay. And then for D, D, I already calculated DX is equal to zero. But DY is equal to neg. This over here tells us that DY equals minus CY, which means that CY, which we calculate, is negative 37.5. So DY is negative, negative 37.5 kilonewtons, which is 37.5 kilonewtons DY. And that tells us that our sense for DY is also correct, right? And so when we go back and look at it, we would say that this is 37.5, okay? Like it's bam we, we know all the numbers here and it makes sense right dy and ay should be reacting upwards because the distributed load is pointing down okay that's it